Kita juga ya nanti Bu. Kenapa Bu? Mohon maaf. Ya, udah udah bisa join nih Bu Dewi? Belum bisa sebentar ya. Oke. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. We are live now. Please start. Okay, we start now? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Excellencies, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Europe, Africa, America. Good afternoon, Asia, and good evening, Australia. Welcome to Institute of Tourism webinar. Uh, let me begin by thanking the Institute of Tourism for inviting me as a chairwoman to speak today in this webinar. We will be discussing the most significant issues facing the one of attractive and exotic tourist destination, Labuan Bajo, the hidden haven uh, in Eastern Indonesia. Labuan Bajo is a city center of West Manggarai Barat, West Manggarai, sorry, but some people mention Labuan Bajo as tourist destination, including Komodo Island and some exotic island around the Regency. Labuan Bajo is about one hour and 15 minutes from Bali by flight. This webinar, the International Forum with Expert uh, Panel will provide information of tourism, the potencies, opportunities, the challenges of investment in tourism sector of Labuan Bajo in West Manggarai. By having update and right information from leaders and experts, here we will discuss the Labuan Bajo tourism for a better future. As a chairwoman of this webinar, on behalf of the Institute of Tourism, I wish to take this opportunity to welcome the online participants from all over the world uh, as, the part, as representative of the leaders, experts, students, lectures, and researchers. I would like to welcome all our honorable board and speakers, the executive board of Institute of Tourism, Dr. Talib Rifai, Prof. Jawar Jawari, Prof. Jeffrey Lipman, Prof. Steve Knox. So I uh, thanks to board member of uh, for the opportunity to the webinar, uh, Ms. Bia Broda, Prof. Uh, Mike Kopin, Prof. Wolgan Arif, Prof. Nicholas Kohalis, Ms. Kathy, Ms., uh, Mr. John Akhmatali, Dr. Rafa, Prof. Lynn Minet, also Mr. Abi, Ms. Abir, and Dr. Birgit Robert. And also Dr. Reza Sultani, as founder, the director, and the, the director of uh, Institute of Tourism. The six speakers from leaders and specs, uh, and expert, we have uh, Dr. Dewi Hendriani. I hope uh, she already joined with us. Head of the Communication Bureau, Ministry of Tourism and Economic Creative of Indonesia. And second speakers, uh, Prof. Uh, Noel Scott, uh, Professor of Tourism Management Sustainability, uh, Sustainability Research uh, Center, Australia. And third, uh, Mr. Pius Baut, the head of and the head of the uh, West Manggarai Agency of Tourism, and Mrs. Sana Fatina, President Director, Tourism Authority, Labuan Bajo Flores. Mr. Matius Yosef Seran, lecturer in uh, El Bajo Tourism Polytechnic. And then the last uh, speakers, Associate Professor Devi Rosa Corsa, PhD, Dean of Tourism Faculty, Pancasila University. For one hour and a half, uh, and maximum two hours, the webinar will conduct and lead by moderator, Associate Professor Hera Octadiana, PhD, from James Cook University, Australia. Dr. Hera also conclude uh, summarize uh, the webinar. And at the last session of our webinar, we'll close by Dr. Reza Sultani as the creator, founder, and director of Tourism Institute. Uh, enjoy the webinar, and thank you all people for watching uh, this webinar on YouTube, Instagram, website, Facebook, and other social media. Have a great uh, webinar. So, uh, times uh, to Bu Hera to lead the webinar. Time is yours, Bu Hera. Okay. Thank you, Ibu Eka. Um, good afternoon, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to ladies and gentlemen from on the participants from all over the world. And of course, I would like to uh, extend a warm welcome to all the distinguished guests and also the executive board of the Institute of Tourism, Dr. Talib Rivai, the former Secretary General of UNWTO, Prof. Jafar Jafari, Prof. George, uh, Geoffrey Lipman, Prof. Steve Knox, Doc, and Dr. Reza Sultani, the founder of Institute of Tourism, and also to the esteemed speakers, 
and participants who are watching from the various uh, online media like YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. And also to all the participants to this remarkable international forum with an expert panels, as mentioned by Dr. Uh, Eka. So they are here together uh, to discuss about Labuan Bajo, an enchanting destination nestled in Eastern Indonesia and the gateway to the UNESCO Komodo National Park. And we hope that today's discussion will inspire new ideas, foster collaboration, and contribute to the sustainable development of tourism in the remarkable region. So we have our first speaker here is Dr. Hendriani, Head of Communication Bureau at the Ministry of Tourism and Economic Creative. Um, okay. Dr. Uh, sorry. Here. Ibu Hera. Yes. Uh, may I mention, may I inform uh, you uh, about the Dr. Dewi? Dr. Dewi will be with us at the last session. Because oh, the last session, now, okay. Yeah, because now oh, yeah. she's still with me. So, so we can go to... Yeah, with so, okay. so we can go first to the Professor... Uh, Prof. Noel. Yeah, Prof. Noel, okay. So we have the Prof. Noel here, the Professor of Tourism from the Sustainable Research Center, um, the uh, Sunshine Coast University, Australia. So Professor Noel Scott has worked as a tourism consultant and academic researcher for 26 years. And he has led research and consulting projects in sustainable tourism, tourism branding, destination management, tourism product and experience design, and China tourism. International clients include the UNWTO, OECD, ASEAN, Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Australia Awards Indonesia, and Sri Lanka and Government of Fiji. Prior to starting his academic careers in 2001, he was a senior manager in a variety of leading businesses, including tourism and events Queensland. He is now an adjunct professor of tourism management at the Sustainable Sustainability Research Center of the University of Sunshine Coast. So, Prof. Scott, how are you? Very good, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Yes, good. It's great to see you here after such a while. Um, I think the last time I saw you was in the uh, conference in, in Kauti. <laughs> A few years ago, before the COVID. <laughs> before COVID, yes, Hera. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Prof, uh, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Hera. And um, so firstly, um, I'd like to thank the organisers for allowing me to talk here today. Um, I, I, I've, been in, uh, I've been lucky enough to be involved with Indonesia now for oh, about a decade, I suppose, and have seen its development over time when i first um went to indonesia um indonesia was bali and that's interesting because at, at one time in a previous life when i was working at tourism queensland we used to think that queensland the state of queensland was the gold coast and over time the destination of Queensland developed from having one place to go, Gold Coast, to a number of different destinations, Gold Coast, Brisbane, Sunshine Coast, and Cairns and Townsville and with Sundays. Now, um, that happened in the 1990s, and the same process is happening around the world. So what's happening around the world is that countries or places are becoming multiple destinations. Think about Thailand. At one time, people might have gone to Bangkok. Now they go to Phuket, uh, 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 Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, etc., etc., etc. The same thing is happening in Indonesia. We're moving from Bali being the destination that people associate with um, tourism in Indonesia to, um, and this is part of the government strategy, a number of priority destinations. So we've got uh, Lake Toba, uh, we've got um, Bali, of course, remains, uh, but we have got um, Flores, Komodo, we've got uh, Likupang, and so on. Now, I am impressed, um, oh, and Lombok, of course. I, I am impressed over the past few years in how rapidly 
um, uh, Labuan Bajo has developed. There's been a lot of investment by the uh, central government uh, and West Mangrai um, province in the area. And you can see how that has made a big, a, a big effect on the number of tourists. The airport's been expanded. There's new hotels. Um, the town has got a bustling sort of vibe to it, which is very attractive to tourists. A lot of that um, attraction is based around Komodo, the Komodos as, as animals, and the Komodo National Park. So when I was there um, late last year, you could see the development. You could see that there were more um, uh, liveaboard boats, for example, uh, people staying in the hotels, some beautiful hotels and restaurants on the beach and so on. So something's gone well for Labuan Bajo over the past um, five years, say. Been a lot of investment and it's been successful to the extent that I I hope that there are there 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 is protection um, for the national park. Okay, so I, I I would I would caution Labuan Bajo to be aware of the problems of success. Okay, um, the experience is wonderful. Uh, when I was there last time, we went uh, on a three-day uh, liveaboard boat. We went um, snorkeling. We went uh, uh, to a community, saw the uh, saw the Komodo dragons. Wonderful. I still have wonderful memories. Um, but I also think that there's a lot of um, other resources that Labuan had that the, the West Mangarai, um area has, which are less developed. At the moment, all the development is looking sort of towards uh, Komodo National Park. And Flores, as a larger island, is not really connected into that development. Um, so there's lots of tourists in Labuan Bajo. The local people are benefiting but I am starting to notice some impacts. There's some there's some good work going on in recycling, um, and in um, development of um, uh, responsible um, accommodation providers. But now's the time, I think, for the uh, province to think for the future. There's um, there are some significant new developments happening, um, especially south of um, south and west of um, oh sorry east of uh, uh, Labuan Bajo City, uh, for example Tanamorai on the on the on the uh, west coast and then further on the south. Some investment has gone on in roads and in and more infrastructure. That's 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 wonderful. So the all the basics are there. Now comes the further development, moving perhaps from Flores and West and uh, uh, the region being one destination, La Bon Bajo, to being linked to other parts of Flores, to providing more linkages to local people. And the and the culture and um, uh, uh, culture and um, craftsmanship um, of the local people, um, and planning for how the city will spread out to uh, uh, to the east. So I'm very um, I'm very um, positive about the development of Labuan Bajo. Uh, it's amazing how it's developed over the past five years. It will develop in future. We, but the 
key thing now is the longer term planning to make sure that that um, growth doesn't, as we say in Australia, kill the goose that la that laid the golden egg. Okay, so a bit of longer term planning, linking into the community, preserving the the local culture, developing Labuan, um, developing Flores by linking. Labuan Bajo to uh, Malmere through um, through the uh, uh, an adventurous highway, um, developing a bit of ecotourism in the east of the country, uh, in the east uh, east of the city, and so on. Lots of opportunities, um, some risks that need to be managed. I guess that would be my general comments um uh hera but uh i'm happy to answer any particular questions uh, if i if i can okay thank you prof Scott, for the uh, interesting insight so i think we we will present all the uh, presentation from the speakers and then uh we can ask question and answer afterward yeah dr eka uh, I think uh, uh, Dr. Oh. Lee uh, already joined with us. Can you give time to her to speak now? Yes. Okay. For Dr. Uh, for Ibu, Ibu Ayu, yeah? Ibu Devi. Ibu Devi is here already. Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, good afternoon, Ibu Devi. How are you? Uh, we are okay. good. We are in the middle of the according the information uh, I see. this year so okay. yeah just finished so i'm ready to present my uh, All right. point to this end yeah all right well, Devi, thank you so much for um coming and then uh joining us so i would like to present your uh, CV uh, to the audience before we start. So now we have uh, Dr. Devi Henriani, the Head of Communication Bureau at the Ministry of Tourism and um, Economic Creative. So Dr. Igusti Ayu Devi Henriani is an accomplished academic and professional in the field of tourism. She holds a doctor, doctorate and master's degree in tourism from Univers Universitas Udayana or Udayana University, Bali. And she has made significant contribution to the sector uh, of tourism. With a diverse career, she served as a lecturer at uh, Bali Institute of Tourism, or STP Bali, and progressed through various academic positions. Currently, she is the head of the Communication Bureau at the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy and Baparekraf uh, Republic of Indonesia. Dr. Hendriani has undergone extensive leadership training and has received prestigious awards for her dedication, including the Satya Lenchana Karya Satya and Special Achievement Awards for National Leadership Training. She is an active member of various organizations, holding key positions in BPC, Perhumas, and Pasar Bali, Ikatan Alumni Politeknik Pariwisata Bali, so the, uh, the Association of the uh, Alumni of the uh, Bali Politeknik, and then also the um, the assessor uh, professional, uh, the Association of Indonesia. And uh, Dr. Hendriani has also authored publications such as Trend and Persepsi Makanan Traditional Bali or the, uh, about the traditional Balinese food. And also the uh, Buku Panduan Komunikasi uh, Krisis or uh, the Crisis of the Communication, uh, the, the guideline. And she also has demonstrated her expertise and commitment to advancing the field of tourism. All right, uh, Dr. Dewi, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Ibu Dr. Hera of Tadiana, for this uh, warm welcome to me, my best friend for long time, long time, yeah, Ibu Hera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's good so, to see uh, you again here. <laughs> yeah, nice to see you again. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. Salam. Salam. 
Salam, Naom, Swastiastu, Nama Budaya, Salam, Sehat, Womus Greeting for all of us. Uh, the first of all, uh, Ibu Dr. Nemade Eka Mahadewi, the chairwoman So this uh, discussion for today, thank you for inviting us. And Professor of Tourism Management Sustainability Research Center, Professor Noel Scott. One more greeting from Jakarta. And also uh, Creator and Director, Institute Tourism Belgium, Dr. Reza Soltani. Lecturer in Tourism and Ecotourism Guide, Labuan Bajo, Mr. Ma, Ma, Marius Yosef Teran. And also uh, President Director Authority Lebon Bajo, Flores Nisana Fatima. And the Director of Tourism, Culture and West Manggarai Province, Mr. Plus Baut, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think my staff here, to, you can share my PowerPoint here. Uh, first of all, on behalf of Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy, please allow me to explain some point of our task for the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy target and achievement. In 2024, task of Communication Bureau and Marketing Communication, the strategy and the Laban Bajo promotion, promotional channel. Next. The Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy uh, tasks include carrying out government affairs in the tourism sector and government duties in the creative economy sector to assist the President in administering state government. Next. The ministry's function are to formulate, coordinate, and synchronize the implementation of the policy, coach, and provide administrative support to all organization elements within the Ministry of Tourism, Creative Economy, manage state's property or assets, which are the responsibility of the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy, and also supervise the implementation implementation of the task within the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy. Next, this is the organizational, organizational structure of the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy. The Communication Bureau is under the Secretariat of the Ministry of Tourism and the Marketing Communication is under the Deputy of for Tourism Marketing. Our ministry performance target in 2024, next, we can see together that we, the target is our tourism to contribute to GDP by 4.5% 4 which increased from 4.1% in 2023. The target of tourism foreign exchange value also increased to 7.38 until 13.08 billion US dollar in 2024. In terms of tourism visit, our target in 2024 are 9.5 until 14.3 million visit for foreign tourists and 1.2 until 1.4 billion trips for domestic tourists. In terms of work, workforce, we target that tourism will absorb 22.08 million workers and the creative industry to absorb 24.70 million workers in 2024. Next, Laban Bajo is one of the five super priority tourism destinations in Indonesia. And the President of Republic Indonesia, Mr. Joko Widodo, has instructed that we can focus on developing five priority super destinations 
and these five destinations have the potential to become the new Bali. So we are focusing on the development of infrastructure, communication network quality, creative economy products, and preparing superior human resources as well. Next, Rabon Bajo has become the top of mind in ASEAN market. The success of the 32nd ASEAN Summit in this year, 2023, has strengthened Labuan Bajo as not only a destination for leisure, but also a destination for world class mice and events. This event has a positive impact on local communities' economy, and it develops the destination and empowers the uh, MSM in the local uh, economy. Next, the Communication Bureau in the uh, Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy uh, is a division that publishes work program and policy for ministries or agencies must implement an appropriate communication strategy to deliver them to the public through their communication channels. The task and function of the Communication Bureau are providing public information support, carrying out public relations, managing digital media, producing content related to information on policy products and programs within the ministry, and implementing the Bureau Administrative Affairs. This is how we do that. Uh, the task and function in Communication Bureau carry out innovation in public information service features, increase cooperation with government partners, next, manage crisis communication, update media monitoring tools, increase media and communication relations in Indonesia and abroad, and also carry out the transformation of message content productive, production and optimize of optimization of digital media. Next, the Communication Bureau must implement appropriate communication strategy to communicate their work programs to the public. Our strategies are providing public information through the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economies Public Service Channel and Information Services, official channel, printed and electronic media or paid media, and also conducting synergy and collaboration with pentahelix element. Meanwhile, the other unit, marketing communication, has tasks and function, formulating technical policy, including technical policy, preparing norms, standard, and procedure that create the flow of marketing communication for tourism, destination, and active economy products. Lastly, for the Labuan Bajo, the Communication Bureau carrying out the promotion through the Ministry of Tourism Communication official channels like website, social media, videotron, digital banner, digital poster, podcast, the magazine, and also a wonderful image by that we call own media. And the marketing communication carry out the promotion through the wonderful Indonesia official channel, especially for social media and website, for the tourism destination and creative economy product of London Belgium. I would like to express my utmost gratitude to all parties who have contributed to this event and discussion. I wish you a successfully and fruitful meeting and let increase cooperation and collaboration to promote Laban Bajo to the world. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Om Santi Santi Santi. Thank you. Thank you, Bu Dr. Devi, uh, for the very informative and comprehensive information about Labuan Bajo. Um, it's very good statistic, so I think it's very beneficial for all of you to uh, understand the progress in Labuan Bajo. All right, so now we, we are going to move to the third speaker, uh, Mr. Uh, Pius Baud.
the Director of Tourism and Culture of West Manggarai uh, Province. Mr. Pius Baut SA is a public servant with a bachelor degree in economics. He holds the position of head of the Department of Tourism, Creative Economy and Culture in the West Manggarai Regency. With a career in public service, Mr. Pius has served as the secretary of the Manggarai Barat Tourism and Creative Economy Office from 2009 to 2018, followed by the role of district head in Lambor from 2018 to 2021. Since 2021, um, he has been leading as the head of Department of Tourism, a Creative Economy and Culture for the West Manggarai Regency. His dedication to public service is evident in his professional journey and leadership roles within the local government. So, Mr. Um, Pius Baud, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Ibu Hera, bisa yeah. ke next speaker? Bapak Pius sedang on the way ke... Oh, on the way. Okay. I think uh, we go to next speaker. We can go to uh, Ibu Shana. Ibu Shana? Ya, yeah, Ibu Shana here. Ya, yeah, okay. Ya. Yeah. Alright, I think so we we move to Ibu Shana and then when pa, uh, Mr. Pius uh, is here, then we'll go back to Mr. Pius. So Ibu Shana Fatina, the President Director of Tourism Authority, Labuan Bajo Flores. Ibu Shana Fatina is a highly accomplished entrepreneur and sustainability specialist with a proven track record in the renewable and sustainability industry. Her expertise includes business planning, management startup, and also social entrepreneurship and sustainability. As the President Director of Labuan Bajo Flores Tourism Authority, uh, Mr. Shana has a spearhead various initiative contributing to the industry's success. She's also the founder and president of PT Tina Mitra Mandiri Nusantara. Her extensive experience extends to founding and leading multiple organizations involved in re renewable energy, water and sanitation, hazardous waste management, and sustainable tourism. Ms. Shana holds a Master of Science in Environmental Science from the University of Indonesia and a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering from the Bandung Institute of Technology. She is the recipient of numerous awards, including Inspiring Young Leader Avanti Award, P20 Sustainability Award, and Water and Energy for Food Award. Ms. Shana is actively engaged in the industry, serving as the Secretary General of the Indonesia CNG Companies Association and, particip and participating in various leadership uh, programs. So her commitment and sustainability and entrepreneurship is evident in her impressive list of accolades and ongoing projects. So Ms. Shana Fatina, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ibu Hera. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Uh, His Excellency Dr. Taleb Rifai, former Secretary General UNWTO, Professor Jafar Jafari, founder of Annals of Tourism Research and Chief Editor Tourism Social Science, uh, Ibu Dewi Hendriani, my colleague from the Ministry of Tourism, Prof. Noah Scott, uh, Bapak Pius Baut, Bapak Reza Soltani, uh, Dr. Devi Kausar, Ibu Nimade Eka Mahadewi and Ibu Hera, thank you for the chance uh, and the invitation for us to share about what we do and our progress in Labuan Bajo. So in this next seven minutes, uh, I'll try to make it concise and share about what it's like in Labuan Bajo at the moment and how we're progressing. So uh, Labuan Bajo has been the super priority destination, one of five that has been assigned since 2019 and started in 2020, 20, how the Indonesian government is developing Labuan Bajo as a high quality tourism destination. So let's talk about Labuan Bajo background. Uh, we have this uh, biogeographical position <laughs> and as a Komodo Biosphere Reserve, we have a very unique uh, position uh, we have outstanding universal value, which is the Komodo dragon itself, and also the outstanding landscape of the Komodo Biosphere Reserve. We have this cultural richness, as you can see, Labuan Bajo as a coastal area. We have Bajo, Bugis, and Bima tribes, uh, and we have Manggarayans from the mountainous area. And this small population of around 280, 259,000 people, West Manggarayan region. 
has becoming the basic of Labuan Bajo yeah. when coastal meet the highlands and uh, institution. And with this authentic biodiversity, of course, we cannot only speak about uh, how we can develop this uh, high quality tourism, but also how we can protect the environment from the wildlife marine. And also we have the strategic of development, not building all the areas, but how we preserve the ecosystem that can last long for the both uh, the 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 people and also for the animal and the wildlife. And of course, we see that Labuan Bajo at the moment has a uh, up to 2.5 million US dollar impact uh, in 2019. I think today is like more because we have more uh, visitors coming. And this is the strategy how we can solve the problem, building Labuan Bajo resilient and sustainable enough uh, to a world class sustainable premium quality destination uh, and also uh, managing the SDGs challenge at the moment we have in the East Nusa Tenggara. So this is our vision uh, and last year, uh, this year, I mean, it's becoming our time to take off because we have the Asian Summit held in Labuan Bajo, uh, a big leap for us uh, that has been prepared for the last three years. And the next year will be like 1 million visitors a target because we have extended our airlines, uh, our airport becoming 1 million capacity per year. And the challenge is how to transforming the sea, sun, and sense into spirituality, serenity, and also sustainability, where people usually only know Labuan Bajo for it's a beautiful landscape. But now we want to bring them to become more experienced, uh, experiencing the culture, the warmness, and becoming the for unforgettable memories uh, for this uh, people who come to Labuan Bajo. So why people come to Abon Bajo, some people want to go to the commercial park for the cultural experience, for the golden sunset, adventure activities, but many people come for reasons to Labuan Bajo. Uh, for most of them are looking for the marine tourism, which is diving and also sailing. We have more than 48 dive centers and more than 54 dive sites that can give you one of the most exceptional dive uh, experience in the world. And not only that, we have uh, not only Labuan Bajo, but also like extended travel pattern to Flores, Nambata, Alor, and Bima, which we already identify up to 35 thematic attraction and also 30 tourism villages around the islands. And this becoming the new destination that we always say Labuan Bajo and beyond. We have um, thematic experience, for example, like the UNESCO trip and then trip to the past because we have this uh, one of the famous Homo Floriensis and then we have the conservation trip and also a pilgrimage trip which we introduce Flores as uh, the Vatican of Indonesia. And what the government already done the last uh, four years is be building the infrastructure, uh, which is can uh, capable to handle the Asian summit. Of course, we have this international airport. We have the multi-purpose port. We have the Mansit corridor. We have put our um, electricity cable put down inside uh, the ground, and then we have the homestay and etc. And how we manage all this uh, managing Labuan Bajo from a small part becoming a small city uh, for tourism. So, so far, what we have here that we have up to 400,000 arrivals uh, this year, which is like um, a lot bigger than the last before pandemic. And we have impact more than, I think it's more than 458 billion investment of the Indonesian government. However, we have developed not only the attraction accessibilities, but the number of amenities that supported by all these private companies and private institutions has been growing very uh, well, uh, up to 35%, and also how we can bring the human capital, the community, and the industry in one ecosystem. We call it Floratama Creative Hub, which this ecosystem um, perspective is becoming our back, our approach to create and innovate and also bring everyone in the same uh, page to develop Labuan Bajo. So in a nutshell, actually, we want to transform all this tourism execution in East Nusa Tenggara, especially in Labuan Bajo Forest, how the whole value chains can support and solving the SDGs challenge of East Nusa Tenggara, adding added value, income, saving, and investment accumulation that can bring all down from the high end to the uh, low end and everyone can experience and can have a benefit from tourism. So this is what we do as a tourism authority to orchestrate 
this um, business and management. So what is our target for the next five years is actually the first one is to increase the number of visitors to 1.5 million visitors per year. For information that we have a target like maximum 4 million visitors per year becoming our carrying capacity. So uh, 1.5 is still on the way. Uh, and then uh, we want to increase the length of stay for um, becoming 6.5 days length of stay. And then the 70% of occupancy, which 50% staying at the hotel, because usually people only stay uh, in the tourism boats and they just skip Labuan Bajo and go directly to the airport. So it's our homework to bring people stay more in the uh, Labuan Bajo city. And then how to improve the effort spending into 2000 US dollar per tax per trip by increasing also the number of seats of flights per day from 1,850 becoming 3,000 seats per day for the flights. So in a nutshell, actually at the moment, we're also working together to manage and measure our sustainability uh, of the tourism sector. So we're working together closely with the ISTC, uh, the Indonesian Sustainable Tourism Council, and also together with the uh, local government uh, from the West Manggarai uh, Regency also with the National Park of Komodo from the Ministry of uh, Forestry and also uh, Environment, and how we can work this out with the pentahelic sector. So we already have these numbers about which one it needs more attention, and which one is already done well, because we believe uh, without measuring, we cannot uh, design the right program for the next uh, future. So last but not least, this is our social media platform, uh, our Instagram, Facebook, and our website, and TikTok. And also we have at the moment um, system feedback for feedback from the customers that you can directly give comments about how you think Labuan Bajo have done so far and how we can improve better because we believe uh, everyone wants to improvement, but we have to measure the improvement by collecting all these comments, all these feedbacks with this barcode, and then we will distribute all the feedbacks to the uh, authorized authority, for example, maybe for the airport, for the harbor, and then for the hotels or for the agent, anything, because actually what we need now is to make sure everyone is working their own homeworks and then we collecting and we make uh, the good story of everything so we can uh, keep the reputation of Labuan Bajo becoming well in the next future. So thank you very much. So looking forward for having you guys in Labuan Bajo. Okay. Thank you, Ibu Shana, uh, for very uh, interesting presentation on the strategic uh, development of Labuan Bajo. Um, so... I think I haven't seen uh, Bapak Pius Baut in here. Is he in here yet? If not, then maybe Bu Eka, we can go to uh, Bapak Mr. Marius. Marius, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Marius Yosef, um, already here? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we are going to go to the next speaker, Mr. Marius Yosef Siran, a lecturer in tourism and eco-tourist guide in Labuan Bajo. Mr. Mario Joseph Siran is a tourism specialist, uh, especially in the sustainable tourism development, law of tourism, and social sciences. Uh, she has uh, six years of industry experiences. And currently, he is serving as a junior lecturer in the ecotourism program at Polytechnic El Bajo Commodus Labuan Bajo. Mr. Marius has held diverse roles, including project coordinator for a community nursery initiative, Procurement Assistant with Habitat for Humanity and Data Analyst for the Tourism Competitiveness Index. With a Master's in Tourism from Udayana University and a Bachelor in Philosophy from Sekolah Tinggi Filsafat Katolik Ledaredo, Leda Lero, Mr. Marius has conducted extensive research in areas such as community-based tourism and conservation. Mr. Marius showcases a rich portfolio and certifications, including training in travel consultancy, destination management, and software operations. His dedication to the field is evident through his involvement in various tourism organizations. He was also a recipient of Eastern Indonesia LPDP Scholarship awarded by the Ministry of Finance. All right, Mr. Mario Seran, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, organizers, can you help me with the presentation? Yes, please, you can share by yourself. 
ยอะโมเมนต์พลิสบิซ่าปักเซรันปักมาเรียส Sorry I'm having a second please Oke okay, Pak Pak Seran Dr. Eka, maybe if you have the file, you can share it, or you just send it to me. I share yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that okay. that will be nice. Because I don't have the file, so. Dr. Eka, can you share it? Okay, wait. And for the participants here, um, we will have the. If you are having questions, then you can, um, later um ask the questions after all the speakers present the presentation, and you can also type in the chat if you have uh, any questions. Also, I will uh, use the time to say that. So after the webinar, we we will have the recording uh, uploaded on the same link that uh, you have received already, and uh, including the PowerPoint, the slides, and uh, the profile of all the speakers will be there permanently. You just go to the institutetourism.com, and everything will be there. Thank you. So maybe we go to the next. Okay, I think. Okay. <coughs> oh yeah. Okay, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, excellency speakers, Dr. Eka, Dr. Dewi from Ministry of Tourism, Prof. Noel from Sunshine Coast University, Head of West Mangaran Tourism Authority, Papius, President Director of BPO LBF, Bu Shana Fatina, and Dr. Devi from Pancasila University, and also all uh, organizers and ladies and gentlemen. So, on behalf of Polytechnic El Bajo Komodus and Head Director Prof. Inengah Dasi Astawa, MSE, I would like to say my truly honor to stand before you today as uh, speakers for this webinar. And before I start my presentation entitled Live in Harmony, Story of Komodo Village at Komodo National Park, allowed me to uh, introduce a short about why I choose this theme. Because in 2021, I finished my master's degree in tourism 
uh, from uh, the research uh, in this location in Komodo Island at Komodo National Park. And my research about ecotourism, conservation, and community participation at uh, Komodo Village in Komodo National Park. Okay, next slide, please. So, Komodo Village at Komodo National Park, I would like to say it just around the corner because this uh, one of four villages in main area in the heart of Komodo National Park. And I uh, say it just around the corner because it only takes 15 to 20 minutes from Loh Liang, the main area to see the dragon. Next. Geographically, Komodo Village is in the coordinate. You can see it by yourself. And the boundaries from north uh, is Flores Sea, and the south of the Sumba Strait is from uh, Papagarang Island, and the west from Sape Strait. The residents of Komodo Village come from various tribes and ethnicities including the Modo tribes, Bajo tribes, Mbojo tribes, Sumbanese, Floresnese tribes, Ambonis, Makassar, and Madoris tribes. Komodo village is the village with the largest area covered of 24,000 area and the largest population of 1,000 more of peoples divided into 449 families. Next. So for the morning, uh, livelihood in Komodo Village uh, divided into such uh, various jobs from farmer, fishermen, uh, livestock breeders, and collectors of forest products, <laughs> such as uh, forest honey, tamarind, and fruits. There are also government and private employees as well as member of public who work in ecotourism sector as souvenir sellers, rangers, naturalist guide in Loh Liang, tourist guide, uh, tour boat services, and accommodation, accommodation renter. As you see in uh, photos, that's from uh, my uh, receipts in 2021. These are the morning daily rituals in uh, Komodo village. Next. Uh, about the fishing activities, as the sun climbed higher, fillers set out on their boats and uh, make fishing activity around the island. Next. They also uh, make a gardens uh, normally by uh, women in the village, and they use it to uh, to come to the kitchen. Sorry. Yeah. I think you are unmuted, but Marius. Next slide. Uh, I want to speak also about the wisdom of elders in the heart of Komodo village. Elders share stories passed down through generations. Their tales spoke of the respect for the dragons, the importance of conservation, and the delicate balance that sustain the way of life. In right uh, picture, um, this is the story, the legend of Dragon Princess, that uh, you can read it when you visit the Loh Liang. Next. And uh, villagers of Komodo village also uh, live co coexistence with Komodo dragons. The, they think that... Uh, Komodo dragon is their families 
and they respected his creature, understanding the delicate balance between the human and the dragon realms. In Komodo village, there's also traditional festivals. Uh, sorry, I cannot show you the picture because when I there, there is no festival, but uh, I can show you that there's uh, two pictures of uh, smiling people of uh, local children there that I want to show you that uh, Komodo films, village uh, people, uh, they live in harmony and happy and uh, they have the warmest soul I ever met. Next. Okay, so I can uh, explain to you more about uh, these peoples and the villages and uh, not just about uh, Komodo dragon and natural areas such as in our background, uh, Padar Island. And that's maybe the reason why you have to come to uh, Labuan Bajo and maybe explore more, not only for the natural areas, and the main attraction, but also to see the people, meet the people, experience with their daily life, because uh, as I mentioned before, it's just around the corners. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pak Marisaran, for very uh, interesting uh, story about Labuan Bajo and about the village in Komodo. When you mentioned about the Putri Naga, uh, I remember the story uh, when I was little, you know, I used to read uh, a lot of uh, stories from Indonesia, the legend, and of course Putri Naga is one of them, it's a very popular story. They, they are very familiar with the story of Putri Naga, right, when the Putri Naga actually had a um, uh, twins and one of them is the, the, uh, the human and one of them is the uh, dragon and and I think for those of you who hasn't read the story I think you you can read the story because it's a very interesting story about the uh, Putri Naga or the uh, pr the dragon princess all right uh, now we are going to go to the next speaker so Pak Pius Baud is already here how are you Pak Pius? I'm sorry Pak Pius Sorry, Papius. Masih mute, Pak. Masih mute, Pak. Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Papius. It's great to have you here. Um, so I would like to um read a little bit about the uh, the CV of Papius, which is the director of tourism and culture of West Manggarai Province. So Mr. Piut Baus is a Pius, Pius Baud is a, a public servant or PNS with a bachelor degree in economics, and he holds the position of the head of the Department of Tourism, Creative Economy and Culture in the West Manggarai Regency. With a career in public service, Mr. Pius has served as the secretary of the Manggarai Barat Tourism, and uh, in two thousand. Uh, from 2009-2018 and followed by the role of district head in Lombor from 2018-2021. to 2020, uh, 21. Uh, Since 2021, he has been leading as the head of the Department of Tourism, Creative Economy and Culture for the West Manggarai Regency and his, his dedication to public service is evident in his professional journey and leadership roles within the local government. Yes, pa, Pius, uh, the, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. I'm sorry, I'm late. I just uh, arrived from uh, Tourism Village. Yeah, that's okay, okay my presentation, please. My uh, my presentation material, please. Dari staff Bapak atau kami yang share, Pak? Dr. Eka, please share his documents. Oh. Ibu Yang, saya baru tiba nih. Uh, I just arrived. So, so maybe you help uh, to uh, my presentation. 
Oke, okay, berarti dari Ibu Eka ya Pak Pius ya? Ya, ya. Oke, okay, nanti Ibu mungkin bisa dibantu oleh Ibu Eka. Silakan Pak Pius. Oke. Okay. Ya, yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, I think uh, I don't need explain the first the uh, apa? Maybe the next slide ya. Yeah? Oh, buat pakai short break ya. Langsung dapat cashbacknya tiga ratus ribu. Oh ya? Tiga ratus sembilan belas ribu tiga ratus lima perak. Okay. Ah, uh, uh, I have to explain where is Lawan Bajo. Lawan Bajo is uh, the capital of West Mangrai Regency. Yeah. Uh, Lawan Bajo is the the capital of West Mangrai Regency. Yeah. But uh, in tourism context, Lawan Bajo not just a small city. Yeah. In tourism context, Laban Bajo is a whole destination spot yeah, in West Manggarai, included the Komodo National Park, and so much more. Yeah. Okay, Laban Bajo. So uh, there are uh, so many uh, tourism spot in West Manggarai. There are uh, national, uh, national Komodo National Park, there are some caves in Laman Bajo, there are some water waterfall and uh, cultural uh, attraction. Okay, the next slide. Okay, this is uh, the tourist, tourism timeline of West, Mang West Mangare Regency. Yeah? Uh, West Manggarai established in 2003 and uh, in uh, 2011 uh, Komodo is one of the uh, the new seven wonder of nature in 2013 uh, sale Komodo in Laban Bajo And uh, in 2019, Labuan Bajo is one of the super priority destination. So uh, Labuan Bajo have been uh, built by uh, Indonesian government. All in infrastructure. Uh, in Labuan Bajo, in Komodo National Park, and uh, and the other uh, destination spot. Okay, the next. Yeah, this is data for a uh, visitor uh, in Labuan Bajo. We can see from this data in 2019, it is the normal situation before COVID-19. There is uh, 256,609 uh, 256, uh, visitors. And in 20, uh, 2020 and 2020, The one, it's a uh, COVID nineteen. Uh, it seems decrease the visitors. And last year, uh, rec uh, it, it is recovery pandemic two thousand and twenty two. Uh, increase the visitors. Yeah, one hundred and. Uh, 70,354 and now until November uh, there is 
it's increases it is a number it's more uh, hello it's more than 20, yeah more than uh, 2019 before the covid yeah? and this is the uh, the next data uh, it seems that uh, uh, there are two classification for it and domestic uh, visitors in uh, this year uh, the foreign uh, visitor is more uh, than uh, domestic yeah. it's the same data before uh, COVID 2019 Okay, next slide. And uh, this is the tourism business data of West Mangarai Regency. There are uh, six spas, uh, 15 tourism information center, uh, 30 general public entertainment places, and etc. Eh? You can see in this uh, data. Uh, of uh, tourism business in West Mangarai. Okay, next. Ah, this data based on uh, exit survey last year, long of length of stay uh, visitors in Laban Bajo operates for uh, 0.8 days. And visitor spending operates uh, in rupiah uh, 10,000 no 10 10 million yeah 10 million, yeah? 10 million 697 thousand and uh, 187 rupees for foreign uh, visitor and domestic visitor uh, 9 Nine million uh, six hundred and four thousand one hundred and sixteen rupees. Uh, tourism interesting operates uh, Komodo Island, diving, snorkeling, marine tourism, and uh, the other spot. The attraction operates uh, nature, cultural, and and made. We have uh, 79 uh, DTV in Indonesia. DTV, it's mean uh, spot, tourism spot, yeah, tourism spot. And until now, uh, there are uh, 134 hotels, uh, 85 restaurants, 215 tourism boat, and uh, there are 125 travel agents in Laban Bajo. Next. Okay. Uh, we have uh, tourism village. In Indonesia, it, uh, we call Desa Wisata. Yeah? We have uh, 94 tourism village. And uh, Pok Darwis. Pok Darwis in Indonesia, in English, uh, Local community, yeah. Local community in the tourism village. There are 22 uh, local community. And, uh, okay, I, I think uh, that's all. The next slide, please. Okay, this data about human resources uh, certification program in 2023. Uh, for employee in hotel and restaurant, uh, there are five hundreds uh, that uh, had been uh, that had uh, got certificate. Yeah, get certificate. And uh, the spa, guiding uh, sector, travel agent, my sector. Uh, this data about uh, the employee that had. Had got uh, uh, 
certificate, uh, professional certificate. Ya, yeah. oke, okay. oke. Okay. Uh, this is about uh, what uh, what we have been uh, doing in uh, this year. Yeah. Uh, We, uh, in the, about the program, uh, the, uh, the government program in uh, 2023. There are training on business government and marketing of tourism destination, homestay training, tourism village management training, increasing fashion and hygiene and cult culinary surfing training, uh, etc. And uh, the other program that we have been uh, doing in this year. Okay, next. Ah, and this is the program that we uh, we had done last year. Yeah, we assistance for two uh, tourism village at Indonesia. We call Desa Wisata. Yeah, and uh, link over uh, to the hotel and. Um, Creative economy development for a local community, and we have a application based on a smartphone. Gemas Lawan Bajo Turis My Komodo, and uh, we organize the event, collaborate with the uh, uh, church. Yeah? Catholic Church, eh? Goloko Festival, eh? and Creative Economy uh, Terrace. Okay, next slide. Ah, it's it's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Pius, for the um, insightful presentation about the Labuan Bajo and uh, what has been happening there. Um, Now we are going to move to our sixth speaker, uh, last but not least, Dr. Devi Rosa Kausa, the Associate Professor and Dean of the Faculty of Tourism at Pancasila University. Dr. Devi Rosa Kaisar, a certified hospital hospitality educator, holds a Doctor of Philosophy in International Development from Nagoya University, Japan. She earned a Master's in Tourism Management from Curtin University of Technology, Australia, and a Bachelor of Economics from Pajajaran University, Indonesia. Currently serving as an Associate Professor and Dean at the Faculty of Tourism, Dr. Kausar has extensive international exposure, having been a visiting scholar in Malaysia and Spain, and also a visiting fellow at Wakayama University, Japan. She contributes to academia as the Regional Vice President for Indonesia in, uh, for the International Tourism Studies Association, or ITSA, and as a board member of the ASEAN Tourism Research Association, or ATRA. Her awards include the Emerald Literary Award and the Erasmus Plus Mobility Program Awardee in, 2000, uh, in 2021. Driven by the passion of tourism for tourism, Dr. Kauser had accumulated rich experience since 2004, working on diverse projects, particularly in cultural, in cultural heritage tourism, rural tourism, tourism planning, and education. Please, Dr. Devi, the time is yours. Thank you so much, Dr. Hera, for introducing me. It is uh, such a nice introduction. Uh, hi, everyone. Good afternoon from Jakarta. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Professor Reza Sultani for um, inviting me, for having me here, and also Bu Dr. Eka for um, for inviting me here, and also for being the chairman, the chairwoman of this uh, event. Um, my fellow speakers, uh, we had Dr. Dewi uh, earlier from the Minister of Tourism and Creative Economy, um, Ibu Shana Fatina from uh, the Labuan Bajo Tourism Board, and just now we had uh, Pak Pius Baut um, from Dinas Pariwisata, Ekonomi Kreatif dan Kebudayaan, Manggarai Barat, Professor Noel Scott, uh, also Mr. Uh, Marius uh, Yosef uh, with his uh, very interesting, with all very interesting uh, presentation. Um, let me uh, let me share my screen. <laughs> Just a moment. 
Okay. Okay, are you able to see my screen right now? Yes, we are, yes. All okay, clear. thank you so much. Okay, thank you. So um, when I first got contacted by, um, by Ibu Eka uh, a week ago, I was thinking, uh, what what should I, you know, what should I present? <laughs> because there are so many experts um, in this uh, webinar already. So I think maybe I would like to uh, to focus my presentation on the multiple statuses um, of Labuan Bajo uh, as the hidden heaven and also as a gateway to conservation area and some of its consequence consequences, which we may have to think about for uh, for future uh, development. Uh, so, uh, so just this is this is a picture. Uh, if we Google uh, Labuan Bajo, uh, we rarely uh, see uh, the Labuan Bajo as a city. So this picture here on your right hand side is actually the actual city itself, yeah, uh, and it what in its waters. So if we type Labuan Bajo, uh, what we mainly will see is um, the Pulau Padar, Rinca, and also the Komodo Dragon uh, themselves. So uh, the city itself, it's not really, uh, you know, uh, frequently shown up um, in when you Google when you Google it. So uh, interestingly, um, when we talk about Labuan Bajo, uh, it's, it always associated with Komodo, and the Komodo National Park itself actually has three predicates or statuses. Um, being the first one is uh, as a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve since 1977. So before it actually became a national park, which is since 1980. Uh, and then since 1991, it became a World Heritage Site uh, on the Nature um, Heritage um, List. Yeah. So and then just recently, uh, a few years ago, uh, it was included in the 10 priority destinations. And then on the second term of our uh, President Jokowi, uh, it has gone into the five super priority destinations. So what does it mean? It means that um, lots of investment are going into these super priority destinations. Uh, I tried to summarize the total investment from these five super priority destinations from various sources. And the numbers are like this in billion rupiah. So what does it mean being a World Heritage Site? Uh, first of all, uh, it is included as a World Heritage Site because um, it can exemplify the outstanding universal values, which are the criteria of World Heritage Site. And now what is the OUV or Outstanding Universal Values? Basically, uh, they are cultural and or natural significance, which are so exceptional as to transcend national boundaries and to be of common importance for present and future generations of all humanity. So in this case, Komodo, Komodo National Park is not only um, important for Indonesians, but also for uh, people around the world. And the Komodo National Park uh, is actually listed on the World Heritage List based on Criteria 7 and Criteria 10. So Criteria 10 is that because it contains superlative natural phenomena uh, with exceptional natural beauty, uh, we can see, uh, we could see the pictures just now, they're all beautiful. And then Criteria 10, which is uh, to contain or to serve as uh, natural habitats for in situ conservation, uh, of biological diversity in which this will um, mainly include uh, the Komodo dragon or Komodo lizards. Now for the second or the previous status, the earlier status as a biosphere reserve. Uh, so it is becoming the it was uh, it was included in the biosphere reserve status because of you know because it is the only place where the 5000 giant lizards live and also because it is situated in transition zone between australia and asia flora and fauna habitats 
Uh, it has uh, terrestrial ecosystems, which include open grassland, savanna, uh, monsoon forests, uh, mangroves, and also uh, quasi-cloud for forest. And not only Komodo, it also has other um, other faunas, um, including you know coral reef, coral reefs, um, marine reptiles, fishes, and even marine mammals. So it is that important that it is included as a biosphere reserve uh, since 1977. Now, uh, what, what has come with these multiple statuses and uh, statuses and what are the opportunities and issues? Uh, of course, when you talk about tourism, then uh, in the case of Labuan Bajo, because it is a gateway for a conservation area, then you will come across uh, to issues such as balancing tourism and conservation. Um, and also because it is such, you know, it has a, a really uh, significance uh, in the history of the natural world, we would like visitors to, 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 to actually learn something from their visit to Komodo National Park, right? So quality visitors experience is actually uh, also a challenge. Uh, which must be ma managed uh, through visitor management and also interpretation, how to interpret uh, this um, wealthy natural resources and optimizing socioeconomic benefits and well-being of local communities. Uh, earlier, Professor Noel Scott has mentioned that the benefits seems to be concentrated around Labuan Bajo while Flores is actually, you know, uh, a much bigger island, and we would like to see uh, that trickle down effect further away from uh, the city itself. Uh, the city is also experiencing environmental issues um, like waste, garbage. It has been all over the newspaper and now and then since 2019, since before the pandemic, water issues and also climate change. Uh, so I'm uh, happy that Mishana has touched upon the sustainability matters in her presentation. Human resource capacity development. I'm also happy to, to hear from Pak Pius that uh, Dinas Pariwisata has done many things for certification and for um, increasing the capacity of uh, local human resources in Labuan Bajo. I think that is very important. And... Last one, because we talk about multiple status, statuses, um, we will definitely have many agencies involved uh, in the management of this area. So it leads to the discussion of political economy leading to political ecology. Now, what are this political economy and political ecology and why is it important to talk about them when we talk about Labuan Bajo? is because first, um, the definition. So political economy is actually a study of socioeconomic forces and power relations that are constituted in the process of the production of commodities, uh, including tourism commodities, uh, and it may trigger conflicts and inequalities that arise from this. So when you have multiple agencies working uh, in an area, it is apparent that you know, you might come across these kind of issues where the power relations is not really equal between the organization. And several, many, several manifestations of the political economy of tourism development is actually one, state-managed capitalism, uh, unequal economic organization, speculative investment into a strategically situated land assets by landowners, developers, and construct constructors in alliance with amenable uh, public authorities. So uh, it is common uh, to see in political economic issue, to see powers uh, from the government working together with big private sector companies or big um, investors. So that is something that we would like to be more careful about as well, I think. And, um, and every now and then, tourism development has the potential to generate economic inequality, depending on which actor has the strongest power in making decisions, and often depending also on the complex relationship between the state and other actors, 
So this is um, stated by Mosdell in 2016. Um, and not only uh, in Labuan Bajo, but, but uh, uh, in other World Heritage Sites, we see these kind of things, you know, have the potential to happen. Uh, the, the later is also political ecology. So from political economy, we can also talk about political ecology, which is quite relevant to talk about because um, this area has the statuses of uh, conservation area. So political ecology is, um, is when economic structures and power relations drive environmental changes in an increasingly interconnected world. So these economic structures can can drive how you uh, you manage your environment, and also it can drive environmental changes. So I think we what we desire is that the Komodo National Park itself um, is basically um, you know uh, left as left as it is, <laughs> even though uh, tourism you know uh, flourished in Labuan Bajo because uh, when the, when that area uh, is disturbed uh, or is very much disturbed, we won't be able, you know we fear that we won't be able to see Komodo dragons uh, in few years to come. So I think that that is one thing that we don't want uh, uh, to become, right? So, um, of that opportunities and issues, uh, we can then discuss how to balance tourism and conservation through first informed decisions. So um, ideally every decision should come from scientific approach, research approach, and also should, um, should um, include participation of local community. So I think, uh, I saw one audience actually asking about carrying capacity. I think the first thing we should do, or maybe it has already been done, is to determine carrying capacity. I think uh, Ms. Uh, Shana has talked about this uh, when she talked about uh, how many visitors are there they are tar targeting for a few years to come. And also, we can also use technology such as big data for national park management. It has been uh, tried out or implemented uh, in other national parks uh, for measuring visitation, for um, you know identifying identifying sp spatial patterns of use, and also for enhancing visitor experiences. We might also want to develop a technology for interpreting the heritage itself, the biosphere itself. Uh, also, uh, there is a technology uh, from remote sensing technology using satellite data for monitoring environmental and natural resources condition and also state of conservation. And this will contribute to uh, informed decisions uh, by using scientific approach. Um, and also the last two would be collaborative management. Uh, there is uh, the Balai Taman Nasional Komodo which is a technical unit from the Ministry of Forestry and uh, Environment. Uh, there is uh, the uh, Tourism Authority of Labuan Bajo. There is the Dinas Pariwisata or Tourism Office of Manggarai Barat. And also uh, as, a, as a province, uh, East Nusa Tenggara, there are many, um, many agencies actually involved in this. So collaborative management is actually uh, quite idealistic to, to, to be implemented. And last but not least is uh, obviously community participation. So we would be, you know, we would be happy to to uh, to hear not only in Desa Wisata or Tourism Village, but um, we would be, I think, we would be keen to hear what kind of community participation um, has uh, taken place in 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 deciding the tourism of Labuan Bajo. So I think that should be it for my short presentation, Dr. Hera. And this is my LinkedIn address and also uh, my email address. Uh, and I thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Devi, for the insightful uh, presentation, uh, especially for the political economy and also the political ecology. That's very interesting. So um, I would like to, uh, 
I think uh, everyone here agrees that um, all the speakers have presented a very insightful and beneficial information about Labuan Bajo. And um, if I can say in here, Labuan Bajo stands as the gateway to the Majestic Comoro National Park, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, recognized for its exceptional natural beauty and ecology importance. While it offers unparalleled natural wonders, there are critical issues to address requiring a delicate balance between tourism and conservation. This include managing visitor experiences, optimizing social, socioeconomic benefits for local communities, and addressing environmental concerns such as waste, water, and climate change. Human, resource de human resources development and understanding the economy and ecology of tourism are also very crucial. To address these challenges, Labuan Bajo focuses on informed decisions. Weka? Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, because sorry, it was uh, suddenly mute. So to address these challenges, we also have learned from the speakers that Labuan Bajo focuses on informed decision, scientific approach and community participation, including the carrying capacity, utiliz utiliz uh, utilizing big data for the park management, also to enhance the interpretative technologies and leveraging satellite data for environmental monitoring. And it's also um, the uh, collaborat collaborative management and community involvement play pivotal, uh, pivotal roles in achieving a harmonious balance between tourism and conservation. And we also learn about the story of Komodo village within the park, which exemplifies coexistence between traditional ways of life and the natural beauty of Komodo National Park. Villagers engage in fishing, agriculture, and cultural practices, demonstrating respect for the environment and the dragons. Festivals celebrate this harmony, emphasizing the community connections to the land, sea, and ancient landscapes. Labuan Bajo promotion as the super priority destination involves infrastructure development, economic contribution, and collaborative efforts. The Tourism Authority aims to transform Labuan Bajo into a sustainable premium quality destination, focusing on spirituality, serenity, and sustainability. The strategy includes highlighting its unique attractions such as Komodo National Park, beautiful islands, and cultural experiences. The Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy staffs involve formulating policies, coordinating implementation, and supervising activities to balance tourism development with conservation. The, communica the communication bureau's role includes public information, relation, digital media management, and content production, emphasizing the importance of effective communication strategies. The tourism projection for Labuan Bajo indicates substantial growth in visitors, length of stay, and economic contribution by 2030. The critical success factors involve the self-sustaining ecosystem, strategic investment, and transformative tourism practices, which is aligned with the sustainable development goals. The region's economic impact on international mice, um, mice events is expected to significantly contribute to the economic growth. So in summary, to ensure the sustainable growth of Labuan Bajo, the informed decision scientific approaches on community participation are vital. Efforts including determining the part carrying capacity, employing technology for environmental monitoring, and also to foster the collaborative management. Additionally, political economy and ecology also play crucial roles in understanding and mitigating the social and environmental impacts of tourism development. Balancing these aspects is the key to preserve the natural splendor of Labuan Bajo while fostering its socio-economic well-being. So I think um, it was very um, uh, interesting um, presentation and thank you very much for all the esteemed speakers for providing a great insights of Labuan Bajo. So now we are going to have a question and answer session. Um, I see that there, there are several questions already in the chat. Um, you can also raise your hands if you have any questions. Um, in here, I can see the first questions from uh, Sandro. Or Ibu, uh, no, actually from Pak Amin Tohari. Pak Amin Tohari from Sidoarjo East Java asking about 
how the destination demand management, the efficient of the destination demand, demand management compared to the carrying capacity based tourism management in Labuan Bajo. So uh, maybe any speaker wants to address this question or to answer this question. So he wants to know how um, destination demand management compared to the carrying capacity based tourism management. Bushana? Maybe from Bushana or pa Marius, Budevi. Okay. Uh, thank you for the question. So basically, uh, in our site, because actually we are in the position that we can um, manage or like orchestrate from all uh, the needs of the whole pentahelix. So we usually like uh, try to accumulate all the impacts from all sectors. So how to manage it? Of course, we have this basic numbers of the carrying capacity that we already calculate together with the stakeholders, especially with the Comoro National Park. Uh, and then we try to implement all these numbers into uh, into the field, but however, also we have feedbacks from the industry sector that they said might be, it has to be like open here or close here and there. So at the moment, we are going to manage this through the communication forum between the industry and all the authorities uh, of the ecosystem. Basically, um, we still in the safe numbers actually at the moment. So we, we are not yet exceeded the numbers, but soon will be so, 2024 will be the time we will try to adjust uh, between the carrying capacity and also the marketing segmentation and also the offering the product of Labuan Bajo. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Busana, for the answer. So now uh, we have Pak Sandro here. Yes, please, your question. Uh, well, hello, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Sarah Buhara. So um, good afternoon, uh, sorry, I mean, good, good morning from uh, United Kingdom. So um, I would like to ask a question to Ms. Uh, Sana, Ibusana. So uh, Ibusana, I, I was a member of Enter uh, uh, Research with uh, Paari Bandaso, if you still remember from Kupang State Polytechnic. So we have uh, conducted research uh, in 20, around 27 of thematic villages uh, in Flores in uh, 2022. So um, now I'm a, a PhD student in the University of Surrey, United Kingdom. So uh, first of all, I would like to appreciate the achievement from uh, the tourism development in East Nusa Tenggara in general and uh, Labuan Bajo or West Mangara in particular. I think this is uh, because uh, the good uh, collaboration between all the stakeholders and also in uh, your leadership, uh, Busana, in Labuan Baji Tourism Authority. So um, based on the figures that you have shown about the five years projection of uh, the target in tourism development in West Mangarai, so my question is, is there any um, specific program in focusing on um, uh, community or resident well-being, since I think uh, in tourism development is not only the important thing, it's not about the economic well-being itself, but also about the humans or the residents or local well-being. So, yeah, that's my question, Sarah. Thank you. Vera, should I able to answer directly? Okay. Yes, please, please, okay. Sana. Thank you, uh, Pasandro. Uh, yes, we are lucky because Labon Budget is really uh, enthusiast people and then it's really easy to uh, elaborate and collaborate. So uh, to your questions, it's actually within the next uh, 2030, we, we are targeting to uh, increase the number of people who work in the tourism sector and supporting the tourism sector. At the moment, it's around 4,500, and then we're targeting up to 19,000. So this number of the 19,000 uh, will might not only supported by the local people because it's not enough. So maybe we should uh, have to take from other regions of West Mangarai, maybe in Flores or Kupang, etc. But we are preparing on that uh, milestones. And then the second thing is actually we have these like traditional uh, local villages that we also use uh, them as uh, destinations, but also to as a supplier. 
for us, uh, for the Labuan Bajo tourism, for example, uh, like the certain uh, area for supplying the fishery and then uh, some is supplying uh, the horticulture and then all the agriculture and etc. So we try to uh, make this Labuan Bajo market as the basic uh, calculation for the um, future market of their existing primary products uh, from the old villages around the area. And at the moment, we also have this program called it uh, Made in Flora Tama. So this program is actually like curating all these uh, small and medium enterprises products that can and have the capacity and have them uh, psychologically, mentally uh, ready to come to the export market and then we are uh, assessing them. So basically, uh, for the whole chain, so we try to fill all with the local products and if they can uh, achieve better, then we can also offering them to become export products to the other country, which is we have a lot of uh, requests. And we want to sell not the raw material, but also with the brand, local brands of uh, East Nusa Tenggara, because we also believe that's uh, how to promote tourism in the future. So getting all from the products and then you are curious about where this come from and you come to Labuan Bajo. Thank you. Thank you, Busana, and Thank also Pasandro for the question. Thank you. So, uh, next question. I think I saw before there was someone, uh, Ibu Fitri. I think. Did you raise your hand before, Ibu Fitri? Ibu Fitri Rahma Fitria. Okay. If not, there is also. A question here in the chat. Uh, I think some of them has been answered by Ibu Shana as well. But there is also another question here from uh, Bapak Sarmo Kosaridi. Um, so he asked about, as presented, that Labuan Bajo shifted its focus from quantitative quality in tourism, or is it still? primarily using tourist arrival numbers as a standard for its tourism industry. Does the government need clearer measures of tourism quality and regenerative tourism that academic and researchers can recommend? Yeah. Anyone want to answer? This is from the chat. So whether it's uh, you know, still using the uh, tourist arrival numbers as the standard for the tourism industry, and whether the, does, uh, the government needs clearer measure measurement of tourism quality and regenerative tourism that academic and researchers can recommend. Maybe, I don't know, from Ibu Devi, maybe, or... Ibu yeah. because time is up, Ibu Hera. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Only one question. Okay, I, I can answer uh, fastly. So, um. During our last uh, four years, actually, we really need more academics and researchers to study about uh, Labuan Bajo and then uh, putting the regenerative tourism uh, as a, one of uh, our nearest agenda and already mentioned with from the from our minister last uh, meetings in Bandung. And actually, uh, this measurement, uh, what we see the challenge is not on the social and economic sector, but mostly in the environmental indicator sectors. For example, like um, how big is the impact to the ecology, to the water, to the waste, and then to the uh, habitat of the animals, for example, and those kind of things. It's not yet being studied uh, really deep from the tourism sector or tourism people, but we already have this one uh, from the Ministry of uh, Forestry and Environment. So I think it will be a very interesting thing to see and uh, to predict the future of the regenerative tourism and ecology-based tourism in Labuan Bajo if we have like more research on that. Thank you. Thank you, Busana. Yeah, I think um, I agree with you, Busana, that we still need more research on Labuan Bajo because when I see, you know, the research on Labuan Bajo, um, of course, I'm I'm very proud that uh, there are many of them actually being done by and also written by the Indonesian, but uh, mainly is focusing on the environmental sustainability and uh, tourism development and management. And some of them talk about tourist perception, maybe just a little bit. Uh, I'm talking about the last five years, right? This is on Labuan Bajo. And a few on the uh, social cultural. So there are things, there are still many 
uh, topics that can be done on Labuan Bajo, like infrastructure development or business and entrepreneurship or regenerative tourism. I think those are the are the topics that can be, um, you know, can be uh, uh, useful for the researchers or the academia to study about Labuan Bajo. All right, uh, Ibu Eka, we, do we still have time or? Um, May uh, I add a little, please? please? <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah, please, please. thank you. Thank you, Bushana, for uh, insightful information. Maybe just uh, just an additional uh, for the economics uh, benefit. Uh, it would be good to conduct research on the backward linkage or the use of local products uh, in the production of uh, tourism services and uh, products. And uh, also, in Indonesia, we often talk about uh, PAD or pendapatan asli daerah, which mostly comes from uh, the tax. But uh, we can also see the increase maybe in PDRB or the regional domestic um, um, product uh, to see the real impact uh, of the tourism economy for the local communities. I think um, that would be uh, some of the indicators that we can use. I think that's all, Bu Hera and uh, Bu Eka. Thank you. Thank you, Bu Devi. Yeah. So, Bu Eka? Yeah. Mr. Pius, head of the authority, is there any comments? Bu Hera, this lead. Yeah. Pa Pius? Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, thank you uh, for um, uh, this chance for me. I'm sorry, I cannot... Uh, uh, <clears throat> explain more eh, uh, about uh, Lawan Bajo, but uh, I'm glad uh, there is Ibusana help me the, uh, to answer any question. <laughs> thank you, Ibusana. <laughs> okay, I think that's all. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Bapak Pius. Yeah, Boykas, do we still have time or it's time to wrap up uh, by Dr. Reza? Please, Reza, you leave the time now. <laughs> no, it's okay. Thank you so much. It was a really wonderful uh, webinar. Of course, that's all. Thanks to our chairwoman, Dr. Eka, and our wonderful moderator, Dr. Um, Hera. Uh, they have done a wonderful job, and all the other speakers and Ministry of Tourism of Indonesia and the um, Lavar Bajo as well. So just want to say that the recording will be available in the coming hours, including the profile and all the slides and the PowerPoint. So you can always go and, and watch them and share them and, and use them. So I give the last word to our chairwoman, <laughs> please. Thank you, Dr. Reza Sultani. And <clears throat> for all speakers who already share data and update information about Labuan Bajo, and for Mr. Pius, uh, thank you very much for your time. In your tight time, you still have enough time to share the information, the update information about Labuan Bajo. I uh, think uh, also for Bu Shana, thank you very much, Ibu Devi. And then also the moderator, Ibu Dr. Hera, thank you very much for your time uh, to join with us in Institute of Tourism. I think that's all of uh, our webinar today. And for the closing, uh, I will give time to Okay, thank you so much, everybody, and uh, see you in wonderful Indonesia. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a great Dr. pleasure Eva. to meet you Bye, all. Everyone. To see thank colleagues you. in here. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. To see you in Jakarta, Bu Devi. See you. Thank you, Weka. Thank you, Weka. Thank Dr. Reza, yeah. thank you so okay, much. Love you. Spanyol man. Hi, Corina. Terima kasih. Hi, Sarah. Terima Great to see you here, Corina. Okay. The same, the same. Bye -bye. I'm glad. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for I attended the meeting. Thanks. Oh, okay. Corina. Okay. Okay.
Looking Thank forward so to much. seeing Romania sometimes. Bye.